Good morning. It's good to be here at New Hope Baptist Church. It's good to be gathered together. Uh, it's a little bit after 11 o'clock this morning, so we'll go ahead and get started. I apologize getting around checking all of y'all's hands. It's, it's a full church, amen, but I'm glad. I'm glad it's good to be around, have a full church where it takes time to shake hands, amen. It's good to see family and friends here this morning. I don't know about y'all, but I'm thankful, thankful a little bit. It didn't snow yesterday, and but just maintain good weather. I, pr- I was praying if it did snow, just blizzard. That would be out of school a few days this week, uh, but it didn't, so... We'll be at school back in the morning. Amen. And, uh, but it is good to be here this morning. And just a few announcements before we get started. Uh, per usual, we will have a deacons meeting uh, this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Church council meeting will be this Wednesday night as well at 6.15 uh, in the evening. And then the Lottie Moon Christmas offering for December 31st. Uh, that ended, and our goal this year was 1600 and just right below that at $1,583. Thank you so much for giving to that and supporting the missions. We just had a donation to make the goal. We just had a donation to make the goal, so uh, good job on that, New Hope. And it's always good to be in support of missions and missionaries around the globe, spreading the gospel of our Lord and Savior. Uh, so thank you so much for being a part of that. Uh, this Wednesday night is also Missions Night, so just for those of you that aren't familiar with what that is, that means this Wednesday night it's not a regular service. I won't get up here and present or teach or preach or anything of that nature, but we'll gather together uh, Women's Mission Union, uh, the children, all those things will still be a part, uh, and uh, the men will be working, I think, on a few things around the church. So if you want to be a part of that, just come on in and uh, enjoy that with us. If you got any questions about that, by the way, if you don't usually go to those, uh, just ask somebody and they'll help you with that. Operation Christmas Child for the month of January. Uh, we'll be receiving items such as hats, gloves, and scarves. Uh, so if you have any of those, any additional ones of those, or would like to make a donation, uh, please, please, please do that. Amen. Any other announcements this morning before we get started? Any at all? Make sure to remember all those on the prayer list, uh, those sick, not feeling well. I know Brother Benji said that his grandbabies still weren't in the best of shape, and he stayed with uh, Miss Lakin this morning at their church just to help out with them. Uh, Miss Sharon Grider, you continue praying for her. I know she's broke her fever yesterday night from what I heard uh, from Brother Jimmy, but she's still sick with COVID and things of that nature. COVID's going around, flu and other things, uh, so just be careful, be cautious, and make sure you've got good hygiene. Amen. Any other announcements this morning? All right. Amen. If everyone will stand and turn to 177, 177, and I think the words are going to be on the screen if you want to use the screens.
Amen. Amen. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11 this morning. Uh, with me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for that good singing. Amen. I, I love those old songs. Maybe I'm just old-fashioned. I, I don't know. Uh, that's just the way I am. Uh, but I, I do. I love those old songs, uh, Victory in Jesus. Uh, that, that other song, Jesus, what a, what a wonderful name. And there's, uh, there's some boys at the old church that used to sing that song, and uh, their father uh, went on to glory uh, not, not too long ago, just a little bit under a year, a little bit over a year at this point in time. Uh, but they would always get up there behind that piano, and those little boys in their innocence would get up there and sing, Jesus, 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 what a wonderful name. And it's good to know, uh, no matter what happens, who's with you, who's against you, uh, that if you've got God, if you've got Jesus in your heart, nothing else matters this morning. And, uh, but we'll be in Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number 1, if you found your place, if you don't mind to stand in the honor and the reading and the reverence of the Word of God this morning. Thank you for that. Good singing, and uh, we missed some in the choir this morning. I don't know if the men are just getting ugly enough where the ladies just don't want to get up there no more, or the men are just sounding too bad behind them where the ladies just don't want to hear it. And, uh, but the ladies did sound good this morning, but I'll be honest with you, I think we can fill up that choir just a little bit more, don't you? And I know some of y'all get in here and you've never jumped up in and been in the choir. Get up in there anyways, amen? And if you can't figure it out, I promise you there are people up there with the experience and knowledge who will help you and assist you however they can. And you're singing for God's honor and His glory anyways, amen? And that is the purpose of it. And I, I want to have a full choir all the times. And uh, I, I believe God will insist that to be, to be your best interest, amen? And uh, now, now I will say there are some men up there that can sing. And uh, Brandon uh, Melton still, still will not act like that boy can sing, but I promise he can. And he'll be singing a special for us before too long, I'm sure. <laughs> And uh, I don't care how many times I've got to say it behind the pulpit for him and his wife to sing us a special, but they, they will sooner or later, amen? I believe 2024 is the year, amen? And uh, we've got a lot of days left, so I'm looking forward to it, amen. Hebrews chapter number 11, it's been good to be here this morning already in the house of God, and I'm looking forward to what's in store this morning, and uh, that's for you, brother. That was a 2020 prayer request I've been meaning to give you, and now I won't forget if I do it right now. So, but it's been good to be here. And uh, y'all bear with us this morning as we preach. I might not have a long message before us this morning, but I just want to give you what God's given me, and uh, we'll go to the house, amen, and go to sleep. And uh, it was a lazy day yesterday. Maybe we can just have two in a row and call it a weekend, all right? Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 1. The Word of God says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Verse number 10 this morning. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful, who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as of the stars of the sky, in multitude, 
and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Amen. You can be seated. Lord, add his readings and blessing to the Word of God this morning. Hebrews chapter number 11 is a very interesting chapter in our Bibles. I I believe it's very motivational when you read it in spirit. And and if I'm not mistaken, the writer of Hebrews is still up in the air a little bit. There is a few ideas of who maybe wrote Hebrews, and some historians can't quite uh, pinpoint it exactly this morning, if I'm not mistaken. But what we do find in Hebrews chapter number 11 is many historians call Hebrews, the, the chapter number 11, the hall of faith. They call it the hall of faith. Can I tell you something this morning? Our names may, may never be written down in scripture or in word or in the history records or documents of the society. And even these individuals here may never have got to see their name pinned down in the hall of faith. But by the way that they lived and by the way that they acted, and we didn't even finish the chapter this morning, we find that they ended up in the hall of faith. We talked a little bit about faith Wednesday night and what it is, and this morning I just want to give you a little bit of a message concerning the faith and the verses we read this morning. And the title of my message is this morning, if you're keeping notes and follow along with me, is I'll just go with God. I'll just go with God. The first thing I want you to recognize this morning is faith is hope. Now, I've been watching the Star Wars movies recently. How many of y'all see, how many of y'all seen the Star Wars movies? How many of y'all like the Star Wars movies? Did anyone's hands go down? Okay, I was just checking. I watched, that's what I did over Christmas break. Do you believe that? I'd study, I'd wake up, I did what I was supposed to do. I did my chores, all those wonderful things, lay in bed till about two in the afternoon, okay? I did what I was supposed to do. But needless to say, I would watch the Star Wars movies and a, a huge premise, and they, there is, it's not biblical, okay? Star Wars is not the gospel. So please bear with me this morning. I'm not using that as an illustration. But they always talked about this thing called hope. As long as we have hope, everything's going to be all right. Can I tell you this morning, Star Wars isn't real, amen, so take that with what you will. But there is one thing that I have found in Star Wars that is semi-faithful and true in what it is saying, is we need hope, amen. Because I'll be honest with you this morning, as we look out into society, and Mitch was testifying about it in the prayer room this morning, is we live in a society that is in a rough shape and form, amen. It is not what it used to be, it is not as holy and righteous, I believe, as it one time was, and I don't believe it will ever reach the point on where it should be, Amen. I don't believe that the countries across the ocean and even below us or above us in North or South America or in Europe and Asia and even Australia this morning, I don't believe that those countries are following God's will and God's plan to a T and crossing their T's and dotting their I's. You know why? Because I believe somewhere along the way that individuals have lost their faith and their hope in something. But can I tell you what we find this morning that we have found to be faithful? It is God. Amen? Faith is hope. Well, who is it hope for? It's hope for the hopeless. Amen. I'm glad this morning in the wickedness of my life and the sin of society when I had no idea where I would go or what would take place and I lived in sin and you did as well this morning. If you were lost and done without the grace of God, which you are or which you were. Amen. Can I tell you something this morning? It's good to know that there was faith, amen, that I could have in a Savior that could save me from my hopeless situation. Amen. We find so many times in this world that individuals will turn to the drugs or the alcohol or the party lifestyle or they'll find something in society to satisfy them just for a few moments, just for a few hours or even for a few years but after a period of time that hope begins to fade. Can I tell you something this morning? There is hope in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. That hope will never fade. That hope will never diminish. That hope will never go away and I'm glad for that this morning. Ain't you? Faith is hope. For the hopeless, but it's also hope for the hopeful. Amen. I'm glad this morning that I'm saved by the grace of God. Ain't you? 
I'm glad we sung the song already this morning. There is a street of gold that will be ours. Amen. This home on planet earth, as we read in verse number 13 this morning, all I am this morning is just a pilgrim and stranger passing through a very strange land. Can I tell you, I'm not, this place is not my home. I am just residing here for a temporary piece of time. And then when we step over in the glory land, I'm glad we will have our home for eternity. Amen. No more sickness, no more pain. Pain, no more sorrow, no more hospital visits, no more hospice visits, amen, no more ER stop bys, drive bys, no more ambulances, no more wheelchairs, no more walkers, no more deterioration with age, no more mental illness or struggle or strife, but perfection in heaven, amen. I'm glad there's hope for the hopeful. It's one thing to be saved, but I'm glad God didn't just save us and leave us out in the wind, out in the middle of space and time and say, good luck, find your way. I'm not going to tell you what's going to take place, but I'm glad Jesus said, if I go, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I'm going to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Amen. I'm thankful for that this morning, that Jesus didn't just go, but He is going and He is coming back one day for His children. I'm glad this morning, ain't you? I'm excited. It thrills my heart and soul to know that Jesus loves me this morning. Faith is hope for the hopeless, for the help, for the hope, for the hopeless, for the hopeful. But interestingly enough, I find in verse number three the wording of the scripture here by the man that wrote Hebrews. He said, "So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear." That's a very theological, in-depth uh, sentence right there. You find in Hebrews. They never knew the Big Bang Theory to exist during this time when Hebrew was written. I'm sure they had their theologies and their ideologies and their philosophies on where the earth originated from. But I find it very interesting so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You say, what's that mean? Can I tell you what it does mean? Let me go ahead and throw this in here. It means that the universe was created by somebody. Amen? The earth was not a, we discussed it for several months about the Big Bang Theory and how it's false in so many ways and how it doesn't even match up with the scientific evidence that they try and show with it. It doesn't even match up at all whatsoever. But needless to say, there, we live in a society, and Steve, Steve's mentioned some men and some gentlemen that believe this very same way, where they've given up on God and they've realized that atheism or agnosticism is the best thing that they can do. Atheists, what they believe is, atheists means they believe there is no God whatsoever and there is proof that there is no God that exists agnostic means that they really just don't know. They're somewhere in the middle. There could be a God, but I just don't believe in it. Can I tell you something this morning? I'm a Christian. I'm saved. Amen. There is a God that created this earth. You say there's no way. It doesn't make any sense. Rational minds have to be created by a rational mind. Amen. Kent Hovind put it very well one time. The man that created the computer is not in the computer, but the computer still runs quite well on its own. Yeah, it's going to fall. It's going to have faults. It's going to have failures. You might have to replace a few parts. Some things are going to get messed up. You might have to go in there and fix a few things. You might have to intervene here and there. But the computer is on its own, but the man that made it is not in it. God is not limited by space and time and matter. Amen? Are you with me this morning? If you had space and time, well, what's in it? If you had matter and time, where would you put it? Amen? If you had matter and space, when would you put it? I'm glad this morning that we're serving a God that is not limited by the things that we see. Amen? I'm glad that we find in Hebrews that there is a good scientific statement right there before our very eyes. God is not in the things that he created, but he sure did create it. Amen? Evidence of things not seen. I love that verse. I love that scripture. Can I tell you this morning, we find that in verse number one. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Evidence of something we haven't seen. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Can you imagine if I show up to the court of law? Does anyone here work in the court or justice system whatsoever, any way, shape, or form? Thank goodness, I can say what I want and I'll be all right, all right? Cut the stream, brother. Just kidding, just kidding. But can you imagine if I went to a court one day, and I'm not going to ask you if you've ever been to court, all right? That's a whole question for another day, No service, all right? Half the church's hands would have went up right there, I'm sure, anyway. Just kidding. If I went to court one day, they said, CJ, what is your evidence against this man? I said, well, I haven't seen it, but I know it's there. They'd laugh at me. They'd kick me out and say, you're a joke. I haven't seen it, but I know it exists. Where's your evidence? The evidence, I haven't seen it, but there is evidence that it's there. Doesn't make any sense. I don't know about y'all this morning, 
But I've went through depressing times, depression myself, anxiety, trouble, and strife, and wickedness, and I, demonic oppression, whatever it is. And sometimes I sit and wonder in those moments, and my eyes begin to fade, and my mind wonders, are y'all like that sometimes? Hey, man, you're a human being just like I am. I know you've been through it. But in the middle of my lowest points in my life, saved Christian, are you with me this morning? Saved Christian, there's a peace that comes from a spiritual world that I've never seen. I can't see it with my own eyes. I can't touch it with my own hands. I've never stepped foot on the property of the place where I can feel it. But I know there's a God in heaven who loves me. Amen? I cannot see him. I cannot give him a physical hug. But there have been times where I've felt felt the presence of the Holy Ghost come sit right up beside me and snuggle me up and tell me he loved me and that everything was going to be all right. I cannot explain it. I cannot make it profound. I cannot illustrate it. I cannot draw it. I cannot give you a shoebox diagram of what it looks like. But what I can tell you this morning is there is evidence of things that I have not seen. There is a heavenly home that is ours. There is a peace inside my heart that surpasses all understanding. I've seen it time and time again. Family members will begin to pass away and there are those that go to church in the house of God and they sit and they smile with their hands crossed at the ER and they're not worried, they're not crying, they're not beat up, they're not beat down. And you ask them, you say, why are you so comfortable right now? I say, well, I know where he's at now and he's not hurting anymore. I know where she's at now and she's not hurting anymore. And one day before here too long, I'll get to see him again. Can I tell you something this morning? I can't explain it. I've never seen it, but I know there is a place called heaven. Amen. I'm glad that it's hope for the hopeful. It's hope for the helpless. And I'm glad that it's evidence of things not seen. Bear with me this morning. I want to give you this. Charles Spurgeon once gave an illustration about a boy in a house. His family had left, I suppose, and the boy was left home alone. All of a sudden, a fire caught wind on the bottom floor. The boy's on the second floor. The fire gets hot. The fire gets to his room before he knows it. He didn't even recognize it. He smells the smoke, but ignores it. It's at his door, and he can't get out, and his only way to go is out the window. He begins to hang from the windowsill on his last stretch of hope. He begins to sit there and with the death grip, knowing his life is on the line, that if he let go, he's going to die. But he's got to hold on. But once that fire gets to him, he's going to die too. There's no way. There's no hope. There's no chance. There's no possibility. And a big, strong man comes right underneath the boy. Drop! Drop! I got you! Just let go! Faith isn't the boy knowing there is a big, strong man below him. It helps. But that's not faith. Yes, there's a big, strong man below him ready to catch him. Yes, the house is on fire. Those are facts. We know it. Evidence. But it's not faith until that boy finally lets go of that window seal and lets the big, strong man catch him. That's when it's faith. Can I tell you something this morning? Some of us are holding on to things because we're so worried about losing them and we just don't know. And if we let go, it's got to be out of our hands and we can't control it anymore and we can't muscle ourselves through it anymore. Can I be honest with you this morning? There is a big God hanging just below you. And all you got to do is just let go and have faith. And I promise he'll catch you every single time. You say, faith is hard to have, preacher. It absolutely is. But you know what you did when you walked in here this morning? You walked in, and you sat down on a pew. Joey, construction worker, fixed the roof. Joey didn't look at the instructional, uh, the constructional integrity of the pew before he sat down. Joey didn't start looking at the nails. Some of you men are smart in construction. Some of you ladies know what to look at on pews and furniture, and even Quentin does a lot of stuff with furniture. When you walked in, you sat down. You didn't worry about what, if it was going to hold you, if you were too big to be held. You just sat down. Can I tell you something this morning? You know what the best thing to be to do with God Quit checking, quit double checking. God, I just don't know. God, can you really do this? And God, let me just check your integrity. God, are you really truthful? God, are you really faithful? Just let go and just sit down and enjoy the ride because I promise he's got you the whole way. Amen? I'm thankful this morning of a Savior, ain't you? I'm thankful faith is hope, aren't you? I'm glad faith is help. Amen? My sister's name is Faith, so she's probably getting a big head over there thinking I'm talking about her. Are you all with me this morning? I'm just kidding. But I want to look at verse number three. We discussed it already a little bit so that the things which are not seen were not made of things which do appear. Can I tell you something this morning? I'm glad God created us in His image. Amen, ain't you? Let's move on this morning to verse number 4. 
Faith is what? Here we have Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Faith is the value in your offering. If you have faith in God, you're going to give him your best. Abel didn't go to God and say, Lord, I, I know you, my family, we worship and serve you, and here I've got this half-beaten lamb, we've got blemishes all over, and I really didn't keep it well, and it's not really young anymore, and it's whatever. The, the, the sheep, it's just, it's just not pretty, but will you take it? No, that's not what Abel did. Can I tell you something this morning? Abel gave God his best. That's what faith is. Oh, I'm fine just living mediocre. Oh, I'm fine. I, I just don't got time. I just can't make time. You know what you're showing God? You just don't got no faith. Well, God, I know you created the universe, and I know you could heal my family. God, I know you could save my lost family. I, I know what I'm going through. You could get me through, but I just, you know, God, just whatever. Just whenever, however, just if it works out. I kind of got it on my own, so can I tell you this morning, that's not faith. Amen? Faith is letting go and giving God your absolute best because he's worthy of it. What we do on so many times is I, I, know, I know how I am, so I know how y'all are. I hold on to my very best. Oh, I love it. I got to cherish it. I put it on my shelf and I show it to everyone. Here's my very best. I just love this. It's the, it's the best thing I got. And then God walks in one day and says, I want it. Whoa, God, God, this is my best. It's on my shelf. I've had it here the whole time. God, I can't give it to you. It means so much to me. We do the very same thing with sin. Do you know that? We put our sin, we love it, we cherish it, we put it on a shelf. And yeah, maybe we don't tell everyone about it, but we've got it there. And then God walks in, I want that. Whoa, whoa, God, I, that's my sin. God, I enjoy that. God, I, I love it. it the, the feeling is so nice. God says, no, get it off the shelf, I want it. Can I tell you, if you've got faith in God, just give it to him. Amen? Let's move on this morning. Move on to verse number five. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. You know Enoch was taken up to heaven before he died? That's a man close to God. Amen? That's a man close to God. You say, well, what's the scripture on that? Well, he's going to come back in the last days, and he's going to be one of two men that preach at the wall in Jerusalem. Amen? That's exactly what the scripture is along that. But can you imagine being so close to God, Brother Matthew, that God looks down from heaven and says, you have pleased me so much, I'm just going to take you on? Can you imagine living a life like that for God? That's unheard of. It's a miracle is what it is. It's only happened one time. We talked about miracles a little bit Wednesday night. Amen? Can I tell you something this afternoon, this morning? If we love God, if we worship God like we say we do, we have our dedication of our life to Him. Amen? If you have faith in God, you will be the best. Amen? If you have faith in God, you'll give Him your best. If you have faith in God, you'll be the best. You say, well, nobody's perfect, preacher. I'm just a sinner saved by grace, and I'm going to have faults and failures. Yeah, you're right. But that's not the reason you don't live like you should be living. Well, I can mess up a little here and there because, well, I'm just not perfect. And the Bible says, be ye perfect. If you ain't got no goals this year, that's a good one to have. Be as perfect as you can. The world is already full of imperfections and blemishes and faults and failures and wickedness of society. They, don't, they could care less about anything that happens whatsoever. That's not your role. That's not your position, not to be worldly, but to be Christ-like and Christ-minded. Amen? the value in your offering, the dedication of your life. But thirdly, we find Noah, and what is his faith here? His faith is the fear of judgment. Can I tell you one day there is coming a day, whether it's at the, the great white throne judgment, amen? And the other one has slipped my mind now off the top of my head, the judgment for those that are saved by the grace of God. Can I tell you one thing? It is coming whether you like it or not. Amen? Judgment is coming. Noah had fear of this judgment. If you have faith, you will tell others about the best thing that's ever happened to you. Amen? Well, God wants my best thing. God wants me to be the best, and now I've got to tell others about the best thing that's ever happened to me? You're asking for a whole lot, preacher. Well, God give it to you anyway. Just give it back to Him. You'll be all right. We say we say, we're saved. We say we're saved. We say we love God. We say we love the things of God. But the last thing we ever do anymore is tell anyone else about Jesus Christ. Well, we live in the redneck, we live in the southern belt, the, the Bible belt, and everyone here knows about Christ. There's church, there's four churches on this road. That's great. Just because they go to church don't mean they're saved. Amen? I'm not looking for religion this morning, I'm looking for a relationship. Amen? Can I tell you this morning, if you were saved like you say you are, somebody ought to know it. If I walked into your work one day and I asked them about you, I wonder what they would tell me. 
I might do that just for the sake of it. Wouldn't that be great? Just over the summer, just randomly just pop in y'all's work. Hey, Brother Matthew over there, Matthew Anders, you think he's a Christian? No, he cusses every time one of those, one of those wrenches break off and fall apart. He cusses every time one of those nut and bolts don't ever attach right. Amen? Amen? They see the real you. I get to see the church you. It's a whole lot different. Can you imagine if I walked into, walked into y'all's college campuses one day and there Peyton is, and I ask him, hey, what do, you, what do you think about Peyton? I don't know. He really don't ever tell nobody nothing. He's quiet all the time, just gets his work done. He's a good student. Was well, he a Christian? I don't know. Huh. Why not? Amen? It's real quiet in here this morning. I like it. Amen? It means y'all are thinking. At least I hope it is and not sleeping. Can I tell you something this morning? What do those around you know about you? Amen? I've got a young man at my work. I'm not going to say his name. i got a young man, man at my work who believes the very same way I do, and there's people calling him a homophobe at work because he's a Christian. And he believes the Bible. Can I tell you something this morning? He's not a homophobe. Okay? He's not homophobic. He's not scared of them. He's not worried about them. He wants to see them saved by the grace of God. Amen? Same way with alcoholics. I'm not an alcoholophobe. Amen? I want to see them saved by the grace of God. I ain't scared of them. They're just people too. But can I tell you this morning, what kind of reputation you got? Amen? Hey, what's, what's Brother Eric over there in Caldwell? What's he stand for? Do you know? I don't know. I mean, he's probably Republican. That's great. That's great. What's his religion? I don't know. He's a good person, so he'll be all right. Uh, if you love God like you say you do, if you have faith in God like you should, you'll give him the best, you'll be the best, and you'll tell others about the best thing that's ever happened to you. Are you all with me this morning? I believe we're going somewhere. Are you all with me? But we also, oh, we also find in Abraham... In verse number 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. The obedience of his will was Abraham's faith. When God says, do something, just do it. Faith is knowing God has your best interest in mind. Amen? I've not always liked what God has told me. Can I be honest with you, brother? But Thomas, I've not always liked what God's told me. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, God, please, God, please give me this. And God wouldn't give it to me. I was like, God, I don't understand. Can I tell you, sometimes, sometimes what I didn't know is that God knew my best interest. Amen. When I was young, I was probably, I don't know, 13, 14, 15. I used to pray to be 6'3". Yep, I prayed for height every day, all the time. I said, God, please let me be 6'3". I'll be your best servant. God, I, God if I'm 6'3", I'll love you more. That ain't make no sense. But that's what I prayed. I was dating a young girl at the time, not the one I'm dating now. And I said, God, please let me marry her. God, I love her to death. And God blew that to pieces. Amen. Can I tell you, if God give me everything I asked for, I can tell you where I would not be, and that's right here, right now. Amen. I'd be in a whole lot different shape. God doesn't control the decisions that you make, but God does control his will for your life. Amen. You still have free will, but just know God has another will. Amen. Let's also move on. I'm moving quickly. I know I'm, it's getting late, all right? Y'all, I can hear your stomachs from here. Gary said, hey, ma'am. Gary posts those pictures all the time of his food on Facebook. My goodness. I'll be, trying, I'll be at work starving to death. And Gary, psh, food right there on Facebook. I, you got, I'm going to block him. Hey, ma'am. Are y'all with me? <laughs> oh, bear with me this morning. Sarah, faith for her was power for the impossible. Faith is knowing the best is yet to come. Sarah, older in her years, aged, laughed at God. You're going to have a child. That's funny, God. I'm too old. Amen. But you find in Hebrews chapter 11 that God gave her the strength to do it. And God did. And now, their children are as innumerable, innumerable as the sand, as as vast as the stars. You know how many that is? That's a lot. That's exactly what that is. Can I tell you something this morning? God can do the impossible. But our faith so many times is limited by what we're used to and not what God has done. Amen? Bear with me. I'm almost finished here. Verse number 13 this morning. Y'all jump there with me. I want to give you these last few verses. I'm going to preach real hot and heavy, and then we'll get out of here. All right, Brother Joey? Verse number 13, the Word of God says, These all died in faith. Not having received the promises. Sarah, your children are going to be innumerable as the sand and the stars. Did she get to see that? No. Did Abraham get to see that? No. 
But can I tell you, the promise still came through. Amen. God is faithful. Every promise God has ever made, and if I'm not mistaken, there's over 3,000 in the Bible. Every single one he's made, he's kept. Amen. I'm glad for that, ain't you? Verse number 13, let's continue reading. And were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Huh. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have the opportunity to have returned. But now, they, have, they desire a better country. Hmm. Better. That is an heavenly Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. You know what a pilgrim is this morning? One who journeys in foreign lands. You know what a stranger is this morning? Someone you don't know or who doesn't belong in a specific place. What we find here in the Word of God and from Christians even right now at this very moment is they are finding, they are searching, they are seeking a country. Can I tell you, when at the end of my life, my goal is not to return back to Moravian Falls, North Carolina. But there is a heavenly home that I'm going to. Can I tell you something this morning? We are just strangers and pilgrims passing through a very strange land. And I'm glad one day that Jesus is coming back, but if he doesn't, I'll go meet him first. Amen. I have no idea if we're living in the last days. It would, be, it would be false preaching to me to tell you we are. I don't know. We may have a thousand years left, but I do know one thing. Jesus is coming back, and you better be ready. I'm glad that he has gone to prepare a place for us, and the Word of God says he will come again. You know what that is? That's a promise. God's never broke those. The title of my message this morning was, I'll just go with God. I don't know about y'all, when I was young, preteen, that was about the time I did my most wicked and sinful and idiotic things. And even after salvation, I have made some very idiotic, ignorant decisions, arrogant decisions. But yet God has always seen me through. And what I found out, if I'd always just go with God from the beginning, I'd never have to worry about anything else. It takes some faith trusting in God, but as the illustration we presented this morning, can I tell you, God is a strong God. He can catch you in any circumstance you're in this morning. Let's stand this morning, heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. I sent Brother Brian a song titled the very same thing this morning as he plays it softly. Maybe you just want to gather around with your family this morning and once again show God that faith. Can I tell you something this morning? There's no other decision. There's no other blessing. There's no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Will you come this morning? Do you know him as your Savior? Do you trust God? Will you go with him one more time? Turn it up, brother. I'll preach real loud for him. Who are you going with this morning? Are you trusting the world one more time and one more day? Can I tell you, just let go and let God. The world can't save you from a hanging thread, but God can. The world can't save you from a fiery pit, but God can. The world can't save your lost family, but God can. The world can't heal your sickness, but God can. Do you trust Him this morning? My life was full of litter of sin and despair, but I'm glad. I found Him faithful, compassionate friends. Will you come this morning? Many are gathered. Can I tell you, God wants your faith this year. Are you going to go with Him? Don't kick against the pricks or go against the grain. Go with God and you'll be all right. God is calling for you to come this morning, will you? Can I ask you this morning, what's holding you back? Oh, I have faith and trust in God. Then trust Him one more time because He's worth it this morning. Trust Him again and you'll be all right. Preacher, my life's falling apart. The bills are getting heavy. I've got no will. I've got no way. I don't know about my child. He's going off to college. I'm worried. I'm afraid. I'm scared. Preacher, I just don't know about work this week. Lord, will you keep me safe? Can I tell you, just trust in Him. He always has been faithful. 
always has been faithful this morning. Can I tell you, I don't know what's holding you back. I don't know what you're fighting against this morning. But I can tell you one thing. The devil will let you down. The devil will fail you every single time. And when you're alone in this world, God will be faithful. I'll just go with God. I've heard it time and time again. I tried the alcohol preacher. I tried the pot. I tried to crack. I'd snort the lines. I'd go to the parties. I tried to work my way. I would go to work to get it off my mind. I tried to have kids to get it off my mind. Just let go and let God because He's worth going with this morning. Will you come? People are still coming to the altar this morning. I believe God's got room for you. Quit holding back. Quit stopping your family. Quit stopping yourself. And just let go and say, God, I'm going to serve you. I think I'll just go with God. What about you, friend? Will you come this morning? Can I tell you, life is running slim. Life is running slim, friend. You're not promised tomorrow and this sliver of life that you will live over the next 100 years will vanish as quick as a vapor. Are you ready to go? Jesus is calling. Are you saved this morning? Whether you're at college, whether you're at work, whether you're at school, whether you're at home, whether times are good, whether times are bad, whether times are happy, or whether times are sad, I am glad that God is with you every single step of the way. Amen. There's only one way you'll go to heaven. With God. Do you know Him this morning? I don't care if you teach Sunday school. You hear the song this morning. I don't care how hard you work. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how long you've been in New Hope Baptist Church. There's only one way to heaven. It's repentance and acceptance of a man named Jesus. Do you know him this morning? He'll be the best decision you ever made. Can I tell you something this morning? I don't believe this message is for no reason this morning. I believe God's burdening your heart. I can't say that I'm God. I've got no idea. But I do know that God has planned and prepped a message just for you this morning. What are you fighting against? The devil's going to tell you not to walk the aisle. They'll embarrass you. Well, then be embarrassed. It's worth it. The devil will say, don't go. They'll make fun of you. Then be made fun of. It'll be all right. Because he's the best decision you've ever made. You'll be mocked. Your friends will let you go. That's all right. He'll give you some new friends. If I love and serve God, preacher, I've got to quit living the way I'm living. That's all right. The life of God is worth living. If I had to live this life over a hundred times again, I'd live it for God every single time. I've had friends from college text me. They say, CJ, this ain't working. I just can't find that happiness no more. I've got boys I used to play with basketball with. We'd go play. And they say, I just don't find satisfaction in it like I used to. You know why? It runs out. The world will run out. And when they do, and you've met wit's end, God is still full. And when you've used and you've had faith and you have trusted and you have prayed God a million times, guess what? He's still just as full as the first time as when you accepted Him. I'll just go with God. He's working this morning. You'll fade that out, Brother Brian. Thank you so much this morning. Can I tell you, there's no, there is no better decision you'll ever make than accepting, than accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I don't know what's holding you back this morning. I wish I could come down there and honestly just grab you and pick you up and bring you down here, but I can't do that for you. God's going to have to do that. I can preach, I can teach, I can sweat blood and tears and cry over your soul. But can I tell you something this morning? God is only going to save you if you show Him faith. Faith this morning. Don't fight against it this morning. It's not worth dying and going to hell. Nobody's looking around this morning. Don't feel embarrassed. Just because the song and the noise in the room is a little bit quiet, don't get scared. Can I tell you, God is the best decision you'll ever make. I have no idea why you're fighting against it so hard. God has been good every single time. Every single time. 
Your family's in church. You stand here with your family, the ones that you love so dearly, but yet you are fighting so hard and stopping God. Just let go. Let go and trust God. Will you come this morning? Will you come this morning? Just you. I won't point you out. I won't pinpoint you. I won't embarrass you. We'll gather around with you. We'll pray with you. We'll love on you. Can I tell you, there is no better decision you'll ever make than trusting God. Do you know Him? Yes. Has He saved you? That's when the difference begins. I know Peyton Johnson very well. Went to high school together. I promise I'm done. I just can't let go. Not yet. I know Peyton Johnson very well. Went to met in middle school, went through high school together, texted and called, spent nights at his house. I knew him. But can I tell you one thing? When I got to know him, that's what made the difference. Do you know God this morning? Does he make residence inside of your home? Don't leave here lost and home without the grace of God. Jesus saves. Master, Savior, what are you stopping? Mm. You can look this way this morning. Thank you for being here. And can I tell you, it, it burdens my heart this morning. I, first off, I would be ignorant anyways to believe that all of us inside this church are saved by the grace of God. I can't tell you if Steve's saved. That's not my position. That's between him and God. But I can see it by the fruits in his lives and how he acts and how he lives. And when God gets to moving all over him, you can tell. Yeah, he's probably saved. But can I tell you, I don't know your life. I don't know your soul, but God does. Hell is a scary place. Can I tell you something this morning? I didn't get saved because I was looking forward to having a mansion in heaven and a street of gold. Can I tell you, I didn't get saved. I'm not saved this morning because when I did, I was so excited and just so happy and the love was just so full in the air. I felt it, but that's not why I got saved. I knew there was a place called hell. Eternal separation and damnation from a Savior named God. He already came, bled on the died on the cross on the, on the cross of Calvary. Died, buried, and rose again. And you're going to separate yourself from that man? That's foolish. Hell's not worth it this morning. And it never is. I have no idea where we'll be at the end of this year in 2024. But can I tell you something? Go with God. It'll be the best decision you ever made. Thanks for being here this morning. I apologize uh, for the extent of time. I don't apologize for preaching, though, and uh, giving the Word of God. I've said that before. I apologize for taking the time, and then I've got about eight men after service and shake me and grab me and say, don't you ever apologize for taking time. So I, <laughs> see, I'll just bear with me this morning. I want to preach and give you what God's given me. And can I tell you, it's January 8th, something like that. And I uh, wish it was... Wish it was about May 30th. Amen. And, uh, but can I tell you something this morning? God's the best decision you'll ever make. And if you have made that decision, why on earth don't you trust Him enough? I'm guilty too. Amen. I'm, I'm just very same way y'all are. Oh, I'm saved. I love God. And then I have to have some faith and trust in God in a situation coming up. And I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa. Have faith. He's good. Amen. Always. Time and time again. Y'all be good this, this morning. Make sure you have a good evening. Go and get you some good, nice food. Amen. Ben's not here to put it on his tab, so we'll just, we'll just scoot that to next Sunday. Uh, but go out praying for another this week. And make sure you grab a prayer list, amen, in the, the bulletin, uh, in the vestibule, in the vegetable. And uh, make sure you go and pray over those objects. Amen. Anything before we dismiss in a word of prayer? At all. Testimony, word of encouragement before we dismiss. All right. Well, it's been good to be here. Amen. And I'd love to see a full church be back with us. Like I said, this Wednesday is a missions night, so just keep that in mind. And if you still want to be a part of the service and help out, amen. we'll take all the help we can get. Amen. Mentally. Amen. Physically, for sure. All right. Spiritually, we'll take it all. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll even take smiles. We'll take it all. Uh, but if you don't be back with us this Wednesday night, make sure you're back with us next Sunday. And a few things before we dismiss. If you are in that college age, uh, please be here for Brother Brandon and uh, Brother Mitch York. And they didn't, ask, they didn't tell me to tell you this, uh, but they, if I'm not mistaken, they didn't have anybody in their class this morning. 
And uh, those men, those men study. They're smart. And uh, if they don't do a good job, now you tell me. All right. I mean, uh, Brandon, they just ain't smart. You know. I'm gonna say, all right, let's switch them out. But <laughs> if they do good, you, you let me know too. Okay. I always hear the bad, never hear the good. Uh, but please be here for them if you can. And uh, they, they would, they would love that. And uh, even, even you older high school kids, once you're fading out of that youth class, uh, jump, jump right up on in there, and uh, support them because they need it. Amen. And I want you here. And if you have no idea where to go on Sunday school, uh, we'll figure it out, all right, I promise. You, we might get lost, uh, but if we get lost, Wade will be somewhere, so we'll find him. Amen. <laughs> Anything before we dismiss? I done kept you, kept you way too long today. All right. Brother Gary, will you dismiss us in a word of prayer?